What does it look like for you to join God in mission? This Sunday, as I mentioned, we're uh, scattered across parts of the city in North City communities. Not only are these smaller communities of connection with God and each other, but these are communities designed to have micro expressions of our mission of loving our neighbors in the way of Jesus, which is how we as a church feel called to respond to that question. What does it mean for us to join in God's mission? And I figured to set you up for conversation today, I'd set you up with that question. What does it mean for you to join in God's mission so that you either in a North City community or on your own can ask yourself this question in this next season, what does it look like for you to engage in God's mission? Now, if you're part of North City community, North City communities can either be a, if you will, a missionary community that means a community that's on mission together for a particular reason. We, we have those communities already. Today, we have communities that are meeting in parks to try to connect with young families. We have a North City community that's doing a fun thing uh, to create rest and connection with neighbors. They're already kind of down the road a little bit on articulating what they feel like what they feel called into in this time. But there's also communities, and maybe your North City community is more like this. There is a community of missionaries. That would be people who see themselves as Christians, not only as people who are saved by God's grace, not only people who are saved from something, but saved for something. And that something is to participate in God's mission of loving and reconciling this world to himself. And what it might mean for your North City community is to be a community of people who are trying to love their neighbors in the way of Jesus in whatever space God has called them to. And your North City community can maybe be a community to encourage each other in that call and mission. So I want to have a conversation today and look at a little text with you. And we're going to kind of do a dwelling in the word style. And what that means is we look at scripture and ask a couple questions. Those questions are, what stands out to you? Uh, what questions do you have and what might God be saying to you as a part of the North City community and what might God be saying to your North City community and the broader North City community. Now we've been on a sermon series uh, through the New Testament all in the year and this week we're focused on 1 Timothy but I'm actually going to bring us to uh, back to another part of the gospel but I want to just encourage you, encourage you to take a look at 1 Timothy because it's a great example of Paul articulating his own mission, what he feels called to. There's a point in 1 Timothy where he says, I have been given so much grace by God that I am so compelled to proclaim the message of God's radical grace to everyone. And he kind of um, extorts or uh, encourages that church to do that. But what the scripture I want to focus on today is actually Luke chapter 10. So if you'll turn there in your Bibles, we'll have it on the screen as well. I want to read this text and I want you to ask those questions. What is God saying to you? Um, what questions do you have? What sticks out to you? And maybe that can come up further in your conversation as a North City community. After I read this text, I'm just going to go through a couple highlights that might help you answer the question, what, how is God calling you to participate in his mission in this season? So let's read this together. I'm going to read from uh, the NIV version of the New Testament. Again, this is Luke 10. We're going to re read verses one through nine. And a little backdrop, what Jesus is about to do is he's gathered a following of people and he's about to send them out in mission. He's about to send them out two by two to different villages that he's either already been to or is about to go to. So let's read how he sends them out for mission in this time. It says, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead, uh, ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, he says, go. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eat, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wage. 
and do not move from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near. Now, I just want to say right off the bat, this is going to be very diff different in circumstance than how God calls you into his mission. I'm not here to say this morning that I think Jesus is sending you as an itinerant preacher or weaker or worker in different towns to s drop by random people's houses and just say peace to this house. Although that might be a cool experiment, um, that's not a practical reality of mission in each of our lives. So let's look at this a little bit further and break down some of the things that we can draw into our own lives, into our own communities about what it means for us to participate with God's mission. So I've got a couple questions. I asked you to write down some questions that might have come up as we read that uh, passage and maybe we can talk you can talk about those in your North City community in a little bit. The first one that comes up is like who is sending us and it's a simple answer Jesus and uh, that might go as uh, you might an assumption but it's really important to start there because so much of mission seems like obligation or guilt-driven we feel like we have to serve there's this religious obligation we feel like we have we have to assess what our motivation for mission is before we engage in it and it's really important to say Jesus is sending us because a lot of times what can happen is mission is we can get gung-ho go do a thing and forget that God himself invites us into a partnership with him. We're always saying at North City that mission is about seeing what God is up to in the world and responding. And the reason we say that is we really feel like mission is primarily about God's agency in the world, what he's doing in the world. And then our role, instead of uh, trying to force mission happen or doing things in the world, is to respond to what God's doing. It changes our perception and behavior. The next question is, is where is he sending you? Or in this instance is really interesting. The commentaries around this passage note that it's very likely that Jesus is actually sending these 72 disciples out to go work in a literal harvest. That line about the workers are plent or the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, I think often gets understood as this analogy for the harvest of people to come into the faith uh, and come into a relationship with Jesus, which I think is really true. I think it's functioning that way. But many commentators say that actually it's quite possible that it was doing both, functioning as a metaphor and being a literal command for these disciples to go to these different villages and work in harvesting crops to become workers of the village, to enter into the ethos of those communities, enter into the economies of those communities, enter into the everyday life and the frenzy and the beautiful time that was harvest time in each of those communities. And I think that's so so wonderful because oftentimes when we think about mission, the first thing that pops into our head is, we got to go to Africa or something like that, or we've got to be bold in mission and do all these things that are far away. And that word that Jesus says, go, seems like he means go far away. When in reality, the commission here, the, the, the sending into mission is into these everyday ordinary spaces like people's homes, like working for people, like our workplaces. So I want you to imagine as you're trying to answer the question, what does mission look like for you in this time? Don't think about a far away pl place. So that might be something that guy calls you to. Think about your everyday ordinary spaces, your workspaces and your neighborhood. Another question is, what does God expect for us or expect for them when they get there? What does Jesus expect them to do? He gives them these really interesting instructions that I don't think it completely map exactly over to what we're, what we're, we're to do, but he invites them to travel light. Um, to, And I think part of the, the thing behind that is Jesus invites them to depend on who they're being sent to. Oftentimes in mission, we feel like we're bringing something to the table and certainly we're bringing our perception of what God is doing and our ability to respond to it. But we so often love to be in a position of power, of bringing gifts, bringing service. But it's really interesting that God invites them to receive, even down to what they will eat from day to day from these people. And there's something different that happens in mission if we're willing to receive from the people that we're trying to love. And he invites them to do a couple things. He invites them to look for people 
of peace. And this is really important and I want to elaborate on it in a little bit. He asked them for to speak peace in relationship with other people and look for people who they have peace with. And one important thing I want you to understand today as you talk about what mission looks like for you is God, if you respond to his mission, will show you people in your life who you naturally have peace with. As you approach them in relationship, as you engage them in relationship and in mission, you'll experience this sense of peace with them. And that peace will be a guidepost for you to know how to invest your time and your relationships and how to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit's doing. So it's really important, looking for people of peace. And once they find these people of peace, Jesus instructs them to stay there, be in a relationship with them, receive from them, and pay attention to what God is doing. And ultimately, he invites them to heal sick in the midst of, uh, heal the sick people in the midst of that village and community and network. He invites them to cast out demons, pray spiritually bold things in the midst of that community. I see this as living out their faith and belief that God can change circumstances in the midst of people that they are called to. And uh, to kind of sum all that up, he says, proclaim the kingdom of God. And this is a huge theme for what how Jesus conceptualizes what the good news is. What he thinks the good news is, even before he dies on the cross, is the kingdom of God, this reality of God's dream for our world coming true. So at a fundamental level, to be participate in God's mission is to share what we, we might say is the explicit gospel, is to share the gospel that God has grace for people, that he is here to save them, that he's done everything necessary for them to be in relationship with him, and that can totally transform their lives. Yes, that is the gospel, but there's more. There's more in so much as God is doing a new thing and reconciling all things to himself, and we as Christians living out our life of faith in front of people proclaims the good news that God has better intentions for this world. So what does this look like practically in your life and as you guys consider what it means to be a North City community? I want to set you up for discussion in your North City community with a few practical questions. You can, of course, discuss the scripture itself, what stood out to you from what I've been saying, what questions you have, what might God be saying to you. But two guiding questions that I want you to focus on this morning for either you individually as someone who's responding to God's mission or as a community that's trying to discern what God might be calling you to do together. The first question is, what is that mission? What might God be calling you to do? If you have some articulation of it, don't be afraid to put something out there that might not be completely true right now. Get in the practice of articulating what God's calling you to do on mission. The other thing I want you to focus on, given the scripture that we read this morning, is who are the people of peace in your life? Who are these people of peace? They're not going to be probably like those disciples experience, knocking on someone's door and saying peace to them. But these are the people who you have. Uh, do life next to, who you're in proximity to. They could be people who you might have a brief passing relationship with, potentially, or they might be people who have been in your life for a really, really long time. But you have people of peace in your life, either individually or you as a community have common people who you want to connect with. That could either be a network of people. Uh, our North City communities have already articulated this. Uh, one of the North City communities is focused on young families doing life away from their extended families. They, those are people of peace for them, people who they're connected with. There is a North City community focused on people uh, creating spaces of rest and connection for people. Uh, they're connected with people, people of peace would be people who are craving spaces of rest and connection. It could be all over the map. These could be neighbors, literal ones geographically, or people you're doing life next to, or people you share a network with. These could be people you're working with. Anyone who there's peace with in relationship with them. So those are the questions I want you to consider along with the other dwelling questions. Um, so. Right now is the time for the North City communities to sign off and get in a discussion about those very questions. What mission do you feel like God's calling you into to participate in and who are the people of peace in your life?
If you're joining us online and you're not connected with the North City community, that's okay. We'd love for this to spark your own reflection in your life. Or if you want to get in a discussion about that, please direct message us. We'd love to chat with you over whatever platform you're uh, watching this on. And if you'd like to connect with the North City community, we would love to connect you with one. There's one waiting to welcome you and uh, to get to know you either in person or digitally. So please direct message us about that as well. Can I pray for you? You, just to send you into your North City communities or send you into your week with this blessing. May God give you the eyes to see and the ears to hear what God is doing all around you and give you the courage to see the people of peace in your life, to see the mission that he's called you to here and now right in front of you and the courage to respond uh, with boldness and faith in those spaces. In Jesus' name, amen.